Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Vince Perry. I'm a photographer and filmmaker. And today I wanted to bring you through my camera bag, run you through what I've gotten here in this Low Pro 450 AW Mark II. I've been using Low Pro bags for some years now. And I've had this one, I believe since 2018. I actually bought this bag before a two week excursion to Europe. And um, this bag has been holding up over the years for quite some time. Obviously, some time has passed since I've got it. I think this bag right now is at 22 pounds and normally when my Fujifilm X-T3 is in here in the cage and my Atomos Shinobi monitor, this bag is probably maybe 27, 28 pounds when all that stuff is in here. But so the Fujifilm X-T3 is what I'm filming on right now. So I do want to talk about that a little bit before I actually open up the bag because it won't be on the bag or it won't be in the bag because this is what I'm using to film. It's equipped with the 18 to 55 F2.8 to F4. Probably one of the best kit lenses around, hands down. It's a lot of fun to use. I typically use this camera for all my filmmaking, my fashion films. Also use it just for documentary stuff for my YouTube channel as far as following along on my own journey. Use it a lot for vlogging. Just any of my video needs, this is my workhorse of a camera. On that lens is an ND filter that's mounted from KNF Concept. I use ND filters all the time. There was a brief period where I stopped using them but the ND filter is equipped on that lens. If you're not familiar with the ND filter and what it does, it's essentially just a pair of sunshades for your glasses so you can help retain some details when you're filming, help you stay on the shutters that you need to be filming on or that you should film on, the 180th shutter rule, basically doubling the frame rate for shutter speed. And the ND filter is something that helps you maintain that especially when you're shooting in super bright conditions. With the Fujifilm X-T3, it's equipped with a small rig cage, and there's some additional small rig pieces that I have for it, like rails, basically a little stand, and like a hand grip. And on the X-T3, we have the Atomos Shinobi monitor, great monitor. I used to use monitors back in the day, small HD. Have found my way back to using them, and it's great because the Fujifilm doesn't have a flip out screen, so it's great for situations like this. But I also use it when I'm out shooting my fashion stuff. Those fashion films, it's nothing like being able to see your picture in a bigger aspect ratio than just that small screen on the camera. So it's been great. And also mounted on the camera, I have the Rode Wireless Go, and that's actually the mic that I'm using right now. So it is a vital piece for my vlogging setup when I'm out, especially doing BTS. And then there's some other audio I'll get into once we get into the bag. But yeah, this low pro bag is great. Obviously, you gotta have a good bag when you're out shooting and one that's gonna be durable. And one thing I like about this, it doesn't necessarily look like a camera bag. It kind of looks like a bit of a military bag, kind of very low key. And the great thing about it is it opens up right in the back. And for security reasons, I think that's great as well. So let me pop this open here. We'll get into what's going on in the bag, a little bit about things that I'm using. We'll start off very simple. I've got two cases from Japan Camera Hunter. These are 120 film cases. These hold 10 rolls, but I also end up loading 35 millimeter two in these cases because it can hold it. And what I like about using these is the slim profile just fitting right down into my bag. You're gonna see that a lot of things in my bag are broken down. The form factors are something that I consider. And when things are able to be broken down, modular, it just makes it easier for traveling. So I'm getting ready to get on the road back to LA for work, go down and shoot some editorials, got some other shoots and stuff going on. So super excited. So I was like, this is a perfect opportune time for me to get into this because this is essentially how I'm going to be packing my bag and just been checking to get all my gear and stuff ready to go. So we've looked at the film cases from Japan Camera Hunter. Let's get into the first film camera I have in here, this 35 millimeter film camera. The Contax G2, one of my favorite cameras, honestly. I've had this for a couple of years, bought this in 2019 as a birthday present for myself, and it's a beautiful champagne color gold. Obviously, there's no lens on this right now, just the body itself. And one cool thing about this camera is just the automation that I can have when shooting film. I kind of use this camera as like a point and shoot, and then I shoot this alongside another camera that I have in my bag, along with the X-T3. When I'm shooting stills on digital, I have all this stuff with me and I'm switching between it all, but the Contax G2 is a lot of fun. And one camera that I love, it's just like being able to shoot film without having to think too much is, is a cool experience sometimes, you know? So 
With that Context G2, I've got two lenses. First up is a brand new lens, kind of mint condition that I found on eBay. Supposedly it's brand new. It came with the box and everything and the leather and everything smelled brand new, this beautiful case. So this is the 90 millimeter F 2.8 for the Context G2. And this is a lot of fun to use. I keep this with me. I don't necessarily use it a lot. It's not the camera. It's not the lens that you're always going to find attached to my camera, but it is one that I think can come up for special use cases, especially when shooting tight portraits, just as a way to change everything up when I'm shooting with the camera. But the main lens you'll find on there when it is actually on is this 35 millimeter F2. Now these are Carl Zeiss lenses. This is a beautiful lens. I actually adapt this lens to my X-T3 as well. I've got something else in here that I'll get to later on in the video that I'll tell you about. But this is a very, very fun lens to use. I think 35 millimeter is a fun focal length on 35 millimeter film or the camera in this case, or full frame if you're shooting digital. I love shooting 35 millimeter. So this is a lot of fun. I can still get those tight portraits. I can get those full body shots. Super important, obviously, <laughs> when shooting fashion, when shooting clothes. So. Those are some things there that go along with my Contax G2, but the other camera that I use as the, my main workhorse mainly is my Mamiya RZ67. Now this is a medium format film camera that shoots 120 film. If you aren't familiar, this is just the box. This is just the body. So everything down in my bag is like broken down. So this is, this is the setup for it. See the beautiful ground glass there. But this is a camera that I use for a good majority of my work. Um, I love the RZ67. This is just the first version, the Pro. And along with that RZ67, one lens that came with it when I first got it a couple years ago, back in 2019, that I use a whole lot is this 110 f2.8. Now, on full frame equivalent, this is about 55, so like that 50 millimeter focal range. And this is a fun lens to use. The 2.8 is the fastest lens for the RZ um, lineup, I think, for the C-Core lenses. So beautiful lens. And maybe what I can do is just get this, I'll get this plugged up on the RZ. I'll get it attached, but there's some other pieces I wanna show you first. So with the RZ, you shoot six by seven. So this is one film back that I have for it. I do wanna collect and get more, but what I like about the RZ is the fact that it can be broken down so it fits down easy in my bag. I don't really put it in there altogether unless I'm in the middle of a shoot sometimes and we're kind of switching up location. But this is the six by seven film back that attaches to the back. But along with the six, seven back, I have a six, four, five back. And this is medium format too as well. If you're not familiar, you can kind of see a little bit of the size difference in comparison. Six, four, five back, six, seven. So. I mount this on the RZ. Let me get this mounted up right now for you right now. So I mount this all up on the RZ and like I said, it, it's modular. And when I first picked up this camera, it came with this film back and the 110 lens. Now, these little body caps and things I've kind of like picked up along the way. I need to get one for the rear, but I do have one for the front for the camera. And then let me see if I can get this lens attached here. Ooh. Sometimes it can be a little bit finicky. Okay, so I've got the lens attached here and this is the camera, how it looks when it's ready to shoot. Got the viewfinder there, the waist level finder. And this is typically the setup that I'm using, but I also have another lens for the RZ67. But that's just the lens that came with the kit and it's been great because I kind of stuck to that for a while. But then I picked up this 65 millimeter lens last year found a sweet deal on facebook this is a really really good condition lens and then i have this old lens case from a sigma lens i used to have when i used to shoot on the canon 5d mark IV. so i like to reuse things that i have and just like this is a great way to travel and just protect the lens a little bit more i think so this is the 65 millimeter lens f4 for the rz and this is a beautiful lens i really enjoy using this lens a lot Gives me a bit of a switch up, especially when getting that full body. This is gonna be something that's more close to the 35 millimeter on medium format when it comes to the equivalent on full frame. So fun lens to use, fun camera to use. Done a ton and ton of work on my RZ67 and I enjoy the camera a lot. So one piece that's important with that RZ67 because I talked to you about the 645 film back. So one cool thing about the RZ67 is 
You can shoot six, seven on it. You can also shoot six or five and six by six, but this is the viewfinder mask. Now, the important use for this viewfinder mask is when I've popped the waist level finder off, when mounting it up basically on this ground glass. It's not gonna be perfect here in this situation, but it would essentially go in like that there. Basically kind of cropping out the area for the 645 because this glass here is a six by seven um, aspect ratio basically. So that just gives you a good idea for the composition you'll be doing, the space that you're shooting, the ground that you're covering, as far as the sensor size, or in this case, the film. So one thing I have too, since we're talking about the film cameras and I covered a little bit about the Japan Camera Hunter cases, I carry an extra low pro pouch in my bag. Now this can be mounted to the outside of the bag too, which is pretty cool. But I have this bag here just to carry extra film. When those cases get filled up, if I'm out, I can put more film in here. It's just another thing for me to have. So I keep one of these with me in my bag all times. And then speaking of another low pro bag I have, I keep this one here for batteries. Now I've got a couple batteries for my XT3. I keep three, usually that's good for me for a full day. One's obviously in the camera right now, but I have two batteries here for the XT3. I've got these, I've got a couple extra batteries for my monitor for the Atomos monitor. So if you take a look here, these are different profiles in, in, in relation to size. So take a look at that there. I've got a more beefier battery, a more slimmer one. And what I like to do with my batteries is just make sure that I have enough to cover a full day of shooting. Um, especially oftentimes like when I'm out, I find myself being out all day and you don't wanna be in a situation where your batteries just die and you can't use something. Um, so that's definitely happened to me before. So we've talked a little bit about cameras, the batteries and such. Super important to have this air blower. It looks like it's broken right now, but I talked a little bit about form factor and being able to break things down. What's cool about this air blower, I don't remember the exact brand that it is, but any old air blower will do if you're looking for one. But this one in particular, if I can get it here, can pop that essentially back in. So it's nice to be able to fit this down in my bag with it being broken down. So I talked about the RZ. It's a big boxy camera. One thing is I have this strap here. This is like an OG strap, and this has been super nice to use when I've been out on my shoots, especially because oftentimes I have my RZ on one shoulder, my X-T3, and then I may have my G2 down in the bag, and I'm kind of switching between all the cameras when I'm out shooting, getting those different formats of creating going on. So this is one strap, the Mumia OG, and then I have this strap from Dispatch, and this is from my Fujifilm X-T3, super cool and style strap, love the camo. Like I said, one shoulder X-T3, another RZ67. So this is a fun strap to use, and also, I've got this newer memory card case. These are super important. I got this a long time ago. It was just like a real cheap option for me. And I've opened the case and some of the memory cards have come loose. So that's not, that's not really a great thing, but that's probably my fault for how I place the memory cards in here. But this is an awesome case because you can just keep all your memory cards stored in here. And I have a couple, two in the XT3 right now. So this is fun uses to travel with, of course, and just keep my memory cards organized. So let's get into a little bit of the audio equipment. I talked about the Rode mic that I'm using, the Rode Wireless Go. I have this Rode pouch from a studio mic that I got a couple years ago. And again, you see me talk about the Sigma case. This is another Rode case I have. I like to just reuse things. I feel like it comes in handy, you know, be able to have sustainability, I guess, without buying new things and just, yeah, use what you have. So there's some road stuff in here. One, I've got a dead cat and this is for the road. Let me pull it out here. So this is for the road video micro. And you can see the mic here. Again, we talk about things being modular and things being able to break down. So I have the mic here. I have the, the mount that goes up on the camera and then dead cat. If I can find the right spot to mount this here. Boom, got one of those. I keep an extra 3.5 jack with me. One's actually in the camera right now. So this is the extra one that I carry. So this is extremely nice to have. 
small form factor and it's cheap. I've used the video pro pluses in the past. Those are great and everything. And this is just a good cheap option. And audio is super, super important. I would say when it comes to making videos, typically if your audio sounds good and your video just looks okay, more often than not, it's all good. So audio, I think is underrated. Pay attention to that for sure. So we talked about that 3.5 jack. I do have a splitter in here. And what I typically do with this is I talked about the Rode Wireless Go on the camera. Typically one end is going to the Rode Wireless Go. One end is going to the Rode Video Micro. This basically allows me to record on two audio channels. That way I can use the Rode Video Micro to get some ambient noise of my environment. And then I can use the Rode Video Micro with the lab that's on me right now. And just, if I didn't want to use the lab, just the wireless mic, I can use this to record an on-person audio as well as the ambient environment. So I like to be able to do that, more versatility. And then within the bag, just a USB-C charging to charge the mic. Very important to keep one of these with me. So talked a little bit about those pieces. Let's talk about something that can always come in handy. Keep some gaffers tape with you. You never know a situation where you may need some tape um, this has come in handy sometimes with backdrops. If I need to kind of just rig something up real quick, you just never know. So gaffer's tape is always good to have. Always keep this with me, pick up a roll. Honestly, out of all this gear that you see today, if there's something here that can help you, I think it's owning gaffer tape 100%. Always good to have. So let's get into these pouches here. I keep a microfiber with me. So this microfiber is kind of like a bigger one, um, more sturdy, I guess. If I ever run into any moisture or get caught in a situation where I'm out shooting and it's rain, I can use this to draw my cameras off a bit. So then I have like a more kind of refined microfiber, one that's a little bit more smooth, use this one typically on my lenses. And then when I'm out shooting, film uh specifically with my rz67 i'm using this Siconic light meter 308 this has been great got this a couple of years ago and it's been trucking it's been going along even having having accidentally dipped it in water because it was like hanging down on my neck and i bent over to like get a shot and yeah it works though so i keep this with me great investment that i got a couple of years ago I've got this tool from Small Rig, as I mentioned, using the Small Rig cases. I have a Small Rig cage actually on my Atomos monitor and then on the X-T3, how I mentioned. So this is a great tool. Um, this is a fabulous tool. I've got a flathead, I've got a screwdriver here, some Allen wrenches, some different things, torque screw, all of that just on this cool little nifty tool from Small Rig. So you never know when you'll need this. You may need to tighten some things down, loosen some things up. Love it that it comes with the case. And I love small rig products. I've been using them for years. So here's a cool little pouch. Got this years ago. There's gonna be a little bit of a theme of reusing things. This came with some filters I bought forever ago, but I use this or repurpose this to use it for other filters I bought and adapters. So this is an ND filter that goes on the 35 millimeter F2 for the lens that goes on my contacts G2. But like I said, I adapt that to my X-T3 and how I adapt that with my X-T3 is this photo deox adapter. This adapter is just okay. It's not my favorite adapter, even though this is the only one I've used. It's a little bit finicky, um, not necessarily as smooth when it comes to releasing the lens, but I've kind of like found a workaround with that. But this is the lens that I'm using to adapt my G mount lenses from my contacts to my X-T3. Getting to use some vintage glass on a modern camera, which is always nice. I especially love doing that for video, um, especially because the prime lenses are a lot faster than the zoom. So we've covered everything within the bag here. So I'm gonna just close this up real quick. And then let's take a look at some of the side pouches what I've got in here. So I got a pair of just some, oop, I just dropped something here. I've got a pair of these Apple headphones, just some headphones that I've had for years. Sometimes like if I'm out in the field, I can use this to monitor the audio. And then I have this Fujifilm charger, of course, for my X-T3 batteries, which is cool. We gotta keep the cameras juiced up and charged. And then on the other side, the other pouch I have, super important piece when it comes to staying connected, making sure you've got some battery out there. I've got this 
Anchor Power Pack. I got this a couple years ago when I went to Europe. And this is just something I can have on me to make sure I keep my phone charged. I can actually use this to charge the X-T3 as well, charge the mic. Um, I don't remember the exact power of this power pack, but it can charge quite a bit. Um, it takes a while to charge, but this is a great piece of equipment to have because you'll never be in it. You'll never know if you'll need to be in a situation where you need to charge something. So that's gonna be all for what I've had in my bag. Hopefully seeing some of these items, maybe it kind of sparks an idea for you to pick something up, whether that's like an indie, something that can be more applicable to you or some gaffer's tape or just keeping that extra battery with you. Now you don't necessarily need all this gear to create. These are some things I've collected over the years, some things that I've come back to as well, things that I've used in my past. But the most important thing when it comes down to creating is your vision, honestly. And all these tools are just things that help me get there. Bottom line is just give me some gear to create whatever camera and I'm gonna do my best to make that happen because I have the vision to bring it all to life. But thank you guys so much for watching the video. We really appreciate you checking out the Peer Space channel. Check out more videos on the channel from the other creators as well as myself. We have a lot that we've done previously and a lot more on the way. Trust me when I say that every week we've got videos coming out. So stick around, subscribe if you haven't already. Drop this video a like if you like it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Holla.